What's going on guys, Super Savage uh, 789 here, bringing you guys a video to do off now, so it's Raised on Miyaboku, episode 11. In the last episode, we covered the whole war arc. Like, literally, the whole war. There weren't many changes to that story. So we'll pick up after the war and cover from there. In the time after the war, Naruto and Konin will return to Miyaboku and end up setting up a spy network. As Chief Toad, Naruto has lots of responsibilities, like taking care of all the toads on Miyaboku, as well as international missions for a variety of reasons, meaning he can't be in the leaf any time he wants. He still does come back whenever he has some time off, though, and would spend time with his friends. I know some people are going to ask, so I'm going to clear this up now. Naruto and Konin aren't dating. That'd be really weird. Conan is like Kushina's age, and plus her heart still wants Yaiko. And, even if those two points weren't a factor, Naruto in this timeline doesn't really care about women or romance. In the leaf, not much re really changed here from canon. I still think Neji would have died saving Hinata in the war, so nothing changed with the Hugo clan as a whole. Gibo would be training hard, with everyone seeing him as a candidate for the 7th Hokage. He would be training hard, learning how to channel Wind and Fire Chakra into his Fang over Fang, to make him much more deadly. He still hasn't perfected stage mode yet due to him being afraid of turning into a stone toad. That's a fate worse than death, at least to him, and if he doesn't need to risk it, he won't risk it. After two years, the Rene Festival would be about to arrive. Kiba, Shino, and Hinata would be hanging out, with Kiba asking if any of them are going to get someone a gift. Shino says no, since he isn't interested in romance, and Hinata would also say no. She just hasn't found that special someone. Awkwardly, Kiba says he hasn't either. Hinata tells them that she has to go, and waves goodbye to her friends as she returns home. Shino realises that Kiba bought Hinata a gift, which he confirms quite embarrassed about. He can't give it to her though, she doesn't like him that way. Seeing the pain in his friend's heart, Shino tells Kiba that he'll never know unless he tries, before he himself walks away. Later on, Kiba and Akamara would be walking around the leaf, not knowing what to do. He'd be muttering to himself about Hinata until he hears Hinata call him over and looks to see her with Sakura, you know, and the others all eating. He'd go over and they'd all enjoy a meal, with Kiba not being able to bring up his feelings to her, afraid of what she'll say. After the meal, when Hinata was returning home, Kiba would try and get the courage to give her a gift. He chases after her where he sees Toneri kidnapping her. In rage, he shouts to let her go as he goes and Akamaru goes to begin chasing her. They begin destroying puppets as they rush towards her, saving her in the nick of time. When assembling a team to send to save Hinabi and stop the moon, Kakashi would call Naruto to the village, who agrees to help. Also, Kiba would request to be on the team, as would Hinata, with Kakashi agreeing after Naruto puts a good word in for both of them. Then, the six all leave to go and save Hinabi from the Otosuki. Since for some reason Sai only made four birds for five people to fly on in canon, an extra person would mean more people have to share a bird. So Naruto would share with Sai and Kiba shares with Hinata, all the while struggling to give Hinari his gift. And, you know, you could have Akamaru sharing with Sakura in a really comedic scene. They would come across the Genjutsu pool, where Kiba and Hinata's dreams end up linking through a random scarf Hinata had on her. She sees Kiba's memories of teammate first meeting, sees her and Kiba's numerous sparring matches, and even sees the other day after she left, realising that Kiba likes her in that way. When they get broken out of the Genjutsu, everyone continues swimming downwards. Toneri would stop Hinata and tells her the same thing, with Kiba and Akamaru bursting out of the water to save her. But Fang over Fang, they end up breaking the puppet, with Toneri saying the same things as the puppy body crumbles to the ground. Meanwhile, the other four come across a weird crap, however it isn't really a fight. With Naruto there to help him, he just enters a crime avatar and with two punches, he caves the crab's skull in easily. The Hinabi rescue team continue moving, coming across a desolate ninja village where everyone splits up to search for clues. Kiba and Hinata begin going around together, where they do those cute little things like removing spiderwebs from one another, drinking out each other's hand, and Hinata rubbing ointment on Kiba's back. Kiba would tell Hinata that he has something to give her, which she asks what it is. Overhearing Kiba and Hinata talking, Naruto tells Sai to be quiet and listen, confusing Sai. He does however play along, and the duo begin listening to Kiba and Hinata talk. Kiba tells Hinata that he's been wanting to give her this for a while now, and goes in his bag, grabbing a gift out of it and giving it to her. She takes it and sees his first ever picture Team A took together in a frame. She tells Kiba that she loves it, thanking him. Hinata goes to say something else, but Kiba's cowardice comes to the surface as he tells Hinata that they have to go to the others real quick, leaping out the window, Vakamaru following, hitting Kiba in midair, making them both tumble to the ground. He looks up and sees Naruto on the side grinning, making him frown that they were both listening. Everyone continues moving, where they come across Hamura, who just spits up that weird genjutsu ball, revealing everything to Hinata, just like normal. Then, Toneri rocks up and steals Hinata, angering Kiba. He activates his sage mode, telling Toneri to give Hinata back. Hinata chose to come with me, 
But even if she didn't, how can you face me with that uneven form? Kiba doesn't have an answer as Tonari and Hinata leave for his castle. Kiba would begin moping and would need to get stamped out of it by someone. Shikamaru offers to do it, but Naruto tells him not to. He will. He goes up to Kiba and tells him that he doesn't understand how he feels really. He never really felt love. But he knows someone who figured all that out, so that might help. Naruto uses summoning Jutsu and summons Fukusaku to the location, asking him to help Kiba. The Toad tells Kiba that sitting around moping will make Hinata like him even more. When he impressed his wife, it took him three years, but he did it through determination. He's lived a long life, and he's seen people lose the love of their lives to someone else. Don't let yourself become one of them. This speech motivates Kiba as he thanks Fukusaku, and everyone leaves, with Pa going back to Miyaboku. Everyone rushes straight for Tsunari, with Kiba using Sage Mode to try and sense Hinata. He rushes away with Akamaru, leaving the rest of the group behind as he goes to save the girl he loves. He comes across the puppet Hinata and begins attacking him. He tells her to snap out of it, and this isn't her. He loves her, and he won't let her be a puppet for someone else. That isn't what love is. This speech allows Hinata to repel Toneri's mind control, as her and Kiba stare down Toneri. He asks how they plan to defeat him, when using a weak form like that. Kiba looks down and smirks slightly. Sometimes, you gotta take risks for the people you love. He looks back up, however he's different. His face is normal, but from the toad pupils and pigmentation. Wait, has Kiba mastered sage mode? Naruto rushes in and Toneri blasts him away. Then his eyes start hurting, he gets the Tensigon fully. Naruto and Kiba fight off Toneri and Naruto saves Toneri from dying. Just gonna slip all over it since it's pretty much the same, nothing new there except Kiba's there, but what's he really gonna do? When going back to the pool, Naruto tells Toneri to come back with him. He can make up for his sins, just like Conan is, and he won't have to have the prejudice against him be brought up. Toneri would actually accept this offer, and actually returns to Earth, instead of staying on the moon. Kiba and Hinata hold hands as they rush through the memory pool. Kiba then uses a fang over fang, carrying him and Hinata out of the cave where they kiss in the air, in a beautiful spectral to behold. Toneri, Kona, and Naruto would end up running a spy network together, with Toneri making up for everything that he's done. He'd even find a valuable necklace and give it to Hinabi to try and make up for what he did, which she thanks him for. Kiba and Hinata would end up marrying and having two kids, Boruto and Himawari. Kiba also ends up becoming the 7th Hokage, and lives out his dream life with Sasuke so becoming the Shadow Hokage. I'll cover the tuning exams arc of Boruto to wrap up the series next week, because that's not going to leave it here. Make sure you like and subscribe and comment out loud to come in the next episode. In episode 11, as you can see, a couple things changed. I kind of just wanted to make this just so you guys could see how Kiba and Hinata got together. And uh, yeah, not much I want to say here. Bye!